John Calvin Abney. Aye, aye, Captain. Aye, aye, Captain. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us tonight. We are in a driveway at a home show. How often do you do driveway home shows? You know, I do a lot. Of, I do a lot of house shows um, because there is a there's a you know there's a precedent that allows us to well, and I and by us I mean songwriters and uh, poets and writers and uh, musicians to perform to an audience that is listening in um, a way that isn't in tune with bars or um, certain public spaces that um, don't quite provide the same uh, environment for us to express ourselves in a way that people can listen to us. Um, tonight was great, man. You know, I got to hang out and play music for people. My buddy Joe Plow and uh, his are band. You, are, just, are you touring together? No, 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 man. I, oh, okay. Joe and I played a solo show in Iowa City last month. I'm on a really, uh, like a... I've been out for three, uh, four months, but three months for my own music. I looked at your schedule. It's like every day. Yeah, yeah. I, I play. I play a lot, man. Um, uh, in June, I was on tour playing lead guitar and steel for my buddy Margo Silker uh, on the West Coast, and then by the end of the month, I was in on the East Coast playing with Lizzie No, both phenomenal songwriters. You gotta listen to them. And then uh, the whole month of July, I was opening up in theaters and uh, uh, large clubs with uh, the, the the boy band Hanson. Like Hanson? Yeah, Mbop Hanson. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're buddies of mine, and they asked me to open up for uh, their 30th anniversary uh, world tour. How long have you known Hanson? Uh, not long, man. Um, okay. um, I played some piano for Isaac Hanson in the studio, and he called me from Scotland and asked me to open up for uh, their East Coast tour. Do you do you recall meeting them? Do you do you know when that happened? I met Isaac be just because um, I got I got a blind date call as a key. I, I played piano and organ mm -hmm. and synthesizers, and I got a call because somebody needed me in the studio and Isaac was producing the record and him and I just hit it off as friends. I was curious about that. I I was I always wonder. I'm not a musician, and so I'm like, when you learn, you know guitar, and then when you learn keys, is it is it beneficial to learn all the things apparently it is Well, the more you learn and, and when you learn arrangement and when you learn composition um you make better choices i feel like uh when it comes to studio work or uh, your own um your own recordings you know i'm a i play a punk dr i play drums in a punk band called pool boy mm -hmm. and um i play a lot to the melodies to the vocal melodies and i play a lot to uh you know the riffs instead of just like just blasting th straight through songs you know yeah and um it's funny because there's been a lot of times where i've been on tour and pool boys had to have a drummer fill in and um what they do is different than what i do because i'm i'm a songwriter and i as a as a drummer i play to the song instead of like being doing what a drummer should do and like mm -hmm. keeping the you know, I yeah. accent things in yeah. really weird ways and stuff, but is that weird? I mean, maybe not weird, but just um, not typical in that genre, I guess. You okay. know, okay, okay. But it's fun, and you know, it, it, it's just who I am. You know, it's how I, how I express myself as a, a drummer, and okay. I guess in that way. Okay, so your dream. I mean, you're touring right now. What is that? Is this? Is, are you living the dream, or is there something bigger you want out there? That's such an odd question because you know <laughs> I've I've done I I I've, I've basically pretty much covered everything I ever wanted to do when I was 15 already. You are know? you serious? Yeah, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> I'm 30, are you serious? I'm 33. I've done everything I really kind of wanted to do. You are know? you ready to settle down? You have a wife? No, kids, I don't family? have okay. a wife. I don't have kids. I don't okay. have a pet. I still basically live out of my car. You know, I live in Austin, Texas. I've got mm -hmm. great a couple great roommates. They're a couple. They're really wonderful people. Okay. Um, for me, I I I've just done everything that I never thought I would do already. You know. That's fascinating. So to me. it's kind of nice because yeah. so, I, I mean, I didn't have like big crazy aspirations, but you know, yeah. I've gotten to play the places I wanted to play. Yeah. I've gotten to do the big shows. What's the best place you played, or the the your dream place, and you've already played it? The Ryman Auditorium. You played in the Ryman. Yeah, I've played it yeah. three times now. Are you serious? Yeah, I've, I've, uh, Moreland and I opened up for Shovels and Rope. I played guitar for John Moreland. Okay. Uh, I opened up. We opened up for Shovels and Rope. Uh, 
we played the Grand Ole Opry there together. Yeah. I played guitar for him on the Grand Ole Opry. And then I just recently opened up and sang my songs opening up for Hanson there. Is there uh, a stage where you ever get nervous? No. Uh, the smaller the stage, the more nervous I get. Well, this is a really small stage tonight. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, it's funny because when you're on a bigger stage, there's there's this... Um, they just kind of blend in, right? Well, there's this uncanny ability to zoom out. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, the stage is so big that it looks like your living room. Mm -hmm. And then the faces, there's so many faces <laughs> yeah. where they almost blend into each other. And um, you can't hear individual voices. You can't see individual eyes. The lights are bright, the room is vast, so you you don't you don't have the same um, nervousness that you would have when you're playing to twenty people in in a small bar That's or wild. the fifty people that you'd play to in a club. You know? Yeah, yeah, it's wild. That, to me, it's wild. I've always been fascinated by um, the fact that like <clears throat> musicians can write a song and then they'll go and play it, and then the the audience sings along. That, and you're, and you're that's like, always that. a gift. That's wild. It's a gift, uh, and it never happens to me. But when it does, it's 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 uh, it shakes me at the core, man. It's like how? Could, why would anyone ever know any of these? Because where were you when you were writing songs? those lyrics, right? I know, man. yeah, yeah. That just blows me away. I'm like, that is the coolest thing that yeah, could it's ever happen. Why would that ever happen to me? That's yeah, wild. Okay, what you want to play a song for us? Yeah, I'll play you guys a song. Okay, sounds good. Uh, Bring us in. What what are you playing? Sounds called Shine Like a Friend. It's on my record Familiar Ground. Familiar Ground. All right, here we go. Oh, anxious hand. Laid light on my bed Take all my plans for today And take a walk through Town at golden hour And what is not true will fade away in the porcelain of dusk In the dawn of red rust They do what we must And that's okay Shine like a friend In all that blooms will fade A hand like that desert sand Will blow away and everyone sees someone in the distance far out of reach with their own life we're stuck between coming and going forever taking leave saying goodbye and I try to be Everyone but me And it took time to see And that's okay Shine like a friend In all that blooms will fade And like that desert sand will blow
That's okay. So good, man. Thank you. So good, <laughs> so good. I'm always curious when you were like growing, like growing up. Who were your influences? And then now, when you're driving in your car, who do you listen to? And you're like, oh my god, those guys are so. good. When I was growing up, I I liked Elliot Smith and Bob Dylan. Um, okay, those okay. were my two favorites. Yeah. Um. You know, um, now nowadays I I listen to a lot of Bill Evans and Oscar Peterson and John Coltrane and uh, okay. jazz in my car. Um, on the way up here recently, I, I've been listening to the uh, the bootlegs and the New York sessions of Blood on the Tracks by Bob Dylan. I've been listening to the Fleet Foxes record, the self titled record, and I've been listening to. Um, uh, there's a jazz pianist that does like lo-fi hip hop uh, renditions uh, called Kiefer. Um, he's really excellent. He's really phenomenal. Like L.A. Uh, piano player that I've been. Really I'm, I'm digging how uh, hip hop is infiltrating, if you will, uh, like Americana and hip hop has been one of my biggest influences for 20 years. Really? Yeah, since day one. It, like, it, I, and I, you're I, obviously not hip hop. No, but but um, the way I phrase things, the way I um, um, rhythmically, Is that like poetry, like, yeah, the way the way I sing has been massively influenced by hip hop. Um, I would say hip hop has had just as much as an influence on me as the blues has in a huge way. Wild, yeah, hip hop's been huge for me um, in so many ways because. You know, hip hop drew from so many genres to begin with. It was such a yeah. a syncretic genre that used um, samples from every possible genre that we could think of, from classical to bossa nova to rumba, um, salsa, um, country, jazz, bop, hard bop cool jazz you know i mean it 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 spanned the entire you know anytime anybody can hear something and they say i want to make a beat out of that and like hip-hop has completely allowed us i mean it 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 is one of the genres that has allowed us to make music in a way that we stitch and and fill in these gaps using other people's and other uh, cultures musics to create a final product you know? yeah do you think it's um under respected uh, it always has been huh. since day one huh. since day one hip-hop has been under respected it, it's been without a doubt and that's coming from a white man you know what i mean like <laughs> totally yeah, it's, yeah. and like yeah you know it um but you know you i you don't i don't have to go deep on it here but you know it's like it 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 changed the world of music mm. and um I mean, even I mean, you listen to pop country today. Yeah. Well, if you yeah. listen to pop country radio today, yeah, uh, you can hear it. Oh, it it uh, if if hip hop didn't exist, pop country today wouldn't exist. That's wild. And right? they don't, and a lot of the pop country musicians don't even realize that what they're pulling from, and they right. say, "No, this is new stuff." I'm like, "No, y'all are pulling from hip hop." Right. You right, know, and, and right. it's it's funny. I mean, yeah. it, it blows my mind. You know, it's a beautiful thing that that how per, um, beautifully pervasive like hip hop has leaked into all genres. You know, jazz, hip hop, yeah. blues. It's all the original folk music, man. Fave hip hop. My favorite hip hop. Yeah. 
Man, when I was 11, I saw Nelly and the St. Lunatics. You did? Uh, my, my mom dropped me off at the Tulsa Convention Center with <laughs> I, my buddy I love the Adam. fact she dropped you off. <laughs> you know, back then, back then, you know, yeah. it was like pre-cell phone, you know? Yeah. Like, I, I used a pay phone. I called my mom Collect from a pay phone downtown Tulsa. and was like, hey, come pick me Adam up, you know? Saint, uh, Nelly and the St. Lunatics was my first hip-hop show. Uh... My buddy Bartiz showed me MF Doom at a young age, you know, when we were in college. Um, huge Nas fan. Um, yeah. Always been a massive Jurassic 5 fan. Um, I mean... Do you, do you listen to any of that when you start to write? You, no, no, but um, um, I do... I, I do... Um, I, I always wanted to be able to figure out a way to use hip hop as a vehicle. Yeah. Um, hip hop has directly influenced my lyrical form. Okay. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. It's yeah. tight. Yeah. You know? yeah. Well, and it's so rhythmic and it's yeah. like, it's using, it's using, if you, if you understand music in a, in a, in a comfortable sense, you know, you, you can say it's like, how many words can I fit in here? And if I can speak them fast enough, or you know what, in in a rhythmic way, how can I make this interesting rhythmically and and lyrically? Yeah. And you can fit it in a chord progression. So if I'm like, you know, like, mm. you know, it's like yeah. I'm like I can hear the beat, but like, how can I play around that pulse? How can I be syncopated? How can I play in and out of what that is? You know, if I'm like this, and I can be like, or I can be like, I can play, you know, yeah. I can play like, you know, you can be in and out of rhythms as long as the, like the beat's tight, you know? So like I yeah. can sing in three over four or, you know, you can like really start to stretch the bounds of things. Cause I mean, like, you know, like, I mean, I mean, I I love to use this example. It's like Buster Rhymes, you know. It's like Buster <laughs> yeah. Rhymes. Like yeah. you listen to Buster Rhymes, it sounds like hi hats doing thirty second notes over like, you know, it's like you know. But he's yeah. like he's he, you can hear what he's saying. You know, it's it's unbelievable. It's it's articulate. It's yeah. powerful and it's fun and it's it, it's exciting. But you know, it's like all rappers. You know, have you know have their own way of going about dancing around the beat and, oh, for and, sure. and, and it influences me as a folk singer <laughs> sure. you know what I mean? yeah it's so it's really cool man oh you my know? gosh i love the cross genre stuff that's so cool yeah, so, and, it happen yeah and you'd be surprised it's yeah. not just i mean you ask anybody man i mean more john moreland my good buddy is, is he's highly influenced by hip-hop we both so, are man. so when you write do you go chords first and a and a progression first or do you find some lyrics that you're like i gotta get this into a song Usually I write a couple lines okay. and I sit on them for a while. Uh -huh. um, chords usually come second, you know. I, I it, it, It's funny, it's all just a big car crash, man, you know. And <laughs> yeah. then you just have to like just stitch it up, you yeah. know. But for, for that's for me. But You literally write it down or do you have a cell phone app where you're like... I love using pencil and okay. on paper. That's okay. one of my... That's that's what I do. I have a lot yeah. of notebooks or I, I write in the margins of my books that I'm reading. Yeah. What are you reading? Uh, right now? Yeah. Um, I have uh, Auden, uh, the poet Auden. Randomly uh, enough, I've got... I'm a huge... Vonnegut's. Yeah, Vonnegut's yeah. huge, man. The Sirens of Titan... Yeah. Uh, Player piano, like those are huge books for me. Okay. Um, Breakfast of Champions, like really screwed up my head when I was younger. <laughs> man. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm reading um, a couple poetry books right now. Um, the poetry's tight. That helps. I'm you reading write uh, Ryanusuke Akutagawa is a Japanese short story writer from the early nineteenth nineteen hundreds. Real dark shit, man. Um, real dark stuff, but really beautiful. It really, ex you know, um, it pushes forward the human condition, you know, um, how weird it is to live in a time where like, you know, we pay for, th you know, things that we need to survive with paper that really has no meaning, you know, it's like, you know, and like we all have these ways of like going about our lives that's just like, you know, we, 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 
we denote our 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 short lives with such funny you know chapters you know it's like oh it's like i remember this part of my life cuz I got fired from my job or, you know, there, there was this timeless incident where, oh, I broke my leg. That was the time of my life where I broke my leg. You know, mm. these like these tiny things. And it's all just really just natural human shit that, that, that we, that we, it happens to everybody. You know, we all have these things that happen to us. And I've been really into that kind of stuff recently. The stuff that kind of paints a picture of just like normal people dealing with normal stuff that, that, um, is more more often than not tragic, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, um. Have you always been ahead of the game as far as maturity? Like an old soul, is yeah. that what you're saying? Yeah. Uh, man. Um, I don't know, man. I I guess I just um. I mean, when I was younger, I had some things happen, you know, generally that, that maybe don't happen to normally to kids. You know, my dad went to jail when I was a kid and, you know, stuff like that, you know. So when you're like, you know, you just, you just, you pick things up, man, you know. But I've always, I've always taken a liking, I always hung out with older folks than, than me, you know. Um, well, you grew up fast, sounds like. Yeah, you know, and it's not always by my choice, you know, or anybody's choice. But, you know, when it comes down to it, I uh, I really, that's a funny that you say that, man. I had a conversation with about this the other day. They're like, hey, did you have fun when you were a kid? <laughs> <laughs> uh, define fun. <laughs> you know, it's like, well, yeah, hell yeah. yeah, man. I know how to have fun, man. You know? yeah. But uh, I take it as a compliment, you know. No, I, I just... Um, well, you're. I think you're light years ahead of most people. <laughs> but, well, yeah. some of it takes self awareness, you know, and sure. that doesn't that doesn't even do you any favors, you know. Sometimes, but, um, yeah, man, you know. I mean, I don't even consider myself that mature in some cases. You know, I've had, well, I've had a shotgun or beer earlier other with, side. with Mike Thornbrew outside. You know what I mean? But when it comes down, <laughs> you know. That's the party side, though. Well, but yeah. you know, it's yeah. like when it comes yeah. down to it, it's like, you know, um, what do we do to like, you know, kind of uh, smooth out the pains of being human? Because we have already yeah. know there's always all these beautiful things that we get to live through, all these beautiful experiences that we get to uh, have as, like, you know, people that get to feel emotion. You know, like, yeah. we're animals that can feel and think about things like death in general. You know what I mean? Yeah. So what, what's hap what's shotgun and a beer with your friends? <laughs> it's a good time. It's called a good time. Yeah, totally, yeah, man. Yeah, it's Absolutely. called a good time. We had a great time tonight. We're at a backyard concert, a house concert. Uh, thanks so much for spending some time with us. You want to take us out one last song? You know, man, I'm just gonna uh, I'm just gonna play like an instrumental piece for you. Go for it. All right. Sounds great. This is a uh, this is a uh, an Eric Satie song, the Gymnopedia's number one. Yeah. <laughs>
so good. Thanks, man. So good. Thanks. Thanks for spending some time with us of here course, on man. Thank you all Van for Sessions. Me, man. Yeah, that was good. Appreciate it.